Hi, my name is Peach Lemme and I waste your time. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make box transitions like this. This video was inspired by Keaton's tutorial for After Effects, and the example I have here was inspired by Lovely Desu's edit. Start off, I have the clips that I want to use, and then my audio marked out not only on my audio, but on the timeline as well. And this time, instead of grabbing an adjustment clip like we normally do, what we're going to do is make a new folder in our media pool by right-clicking and put new bin, renaming it to whatever you want, going into that bin, and then we're now we're going to compound clip our footage. Each of these clips is the whole scene, so what I'm going to do is right-click the footage, go to the top of the menu, and select compound clip. And then I could rename it to whatever I want. I'm just going to keep it to that, and it'll go into our bin. Personally, I bound the compound clip shortcut to the letter C, so when I select the clip and hit it, I can compound the clip easier. I'm going to do this for the rest of the footage. Next, we're going to line up our footage correctly with our markers. So this is going to be the first clip. I'm going to go like that. And we have the second clip goes like this. The third clip it goes like this. All right. Now that we have our footage in the right place, we're going to shorten it down to when we want it to last. What we're going to do is go into our first compound clip. First thing I'm going to do is grab a merge node, connect it up to our node tree. Then I'm going to grab a background node, connect it up here, and then I'm going to switch the inputs so that the background node is on the yellow input. So we're just going to switch that around. Then what we're going to do is grab a rectangle mask from right here and connect it up to our merge. So we have our box, which looks like this. So we're going to go to our background node, put the alpha all the way down so it's transparent. And now we can fix the rectangle the way we want it. I'm going to have this box take up a third of the screen, but the way we're going to do that is we're going to put the height all the way up and then we're going to put the width to 0.333 as much as possible to get it so it's an accurate third of the screen. Then what we're going to do is add a transform node. I've been using the new transform node because it has a better motion blur, so I do suggest you use this one. And now we're going, what we're going to do is get this clip as close to the side of the screen as possible. So we're going to have to line it up just like that. And as you can see, our position is also 0.3333. Now what we're going to do is our animation. So we can see that our animation is going to last about 20 frames. We can have our keyframe, a Y position here, and then we can go to our first frame and keyframe here. We can move it up or down. I'm just going to move it up. It just doesn't go past 0.5, so you have to double click here, hit one, and now it's off the screen. It should be at the top. So if we play it back, it's going to look like this, which isn't ideal. So what we're going to do is change the spline. So we're going to go to the spline up here, the spline page, hit the Y position, zoom to fit our spline graph. And what we're going to do is make an ease out curve, just like this. Mess around with it, may pull this out a little bit, and let's see how this works. <clears throat> see how this is. All right, that's fine. And now we can add a little bit of motion blur to it. Just add a little like about four frames of motion blur going down like that. And that should be fine. Now what we're gonna do, we can also, we can copy this. We can just change it. So we have another sliver on our screen for the next clip. Let's go to the edit page. Let's go to our next clip, open infusion. We just paste it on here. Connect everything up correctly. And now we have the sliver. What we're gonna do is uh, change our animation again. So let's add another transform node. So let's hit transform. And use the black position again. Let's keyframe that and go back to our start. Frame this, and this time I wanted to go down, so I'm just gonna drag this to the left. Let's go negative one. Let's keyframe some motion blur. Back like that and then we can change our spline of the transform. If you grab the node and drag it into the spline viewer, then you can also view the node that way without having to click the boxes. Highlight everything, make an ease out curve, just like this. You can change it again. It's, it's gonna be a little different, I don't know. Try to make it the same so it's, it's nice. And yeah, that looks like that. All right, that's fine, and now what we can also do I'm going to use the same animation here, so I'm just going to copy the nodes here and replace it. The node tree. Like this. Like that. And then we can change the X and we can just make this positive so it's on this side. Bam, just like that. 
and now we have our animation. Oh, if it loads, it's like that. Now what you also see people do is that there's a box around this line. So I'm just going to do that right now. Very easy to implement. We're just going to move these, these two nodes over and we're going to grab another merge sort of like this. Let's make sure it's all down the screen. All right. Now we're going to add a background node connected to our merge. This time it's going to be this input. Let's make it white and it's going to add another box. Actually, we can copy this box, paste it here, just use the same box. But this time we're going to edit our settings. So we're going to turn off solid on the rectangle mask. Then we're going to turn up our border width just a little bit. I'll go like that. And now you have a box around it. But I, I like having no box on this side, no line on this side. So I'm just going to adjust the position and length. So it won't end up like that. If you want to adjust any slider just a little bit, if you hold down control, it allows you to just adjust a little bit without going too much. Now what we can do is just copy these nodes and paste it back into the rest of our clips. With this one, I want a box on both sides, so I'm just going to duplicate this mask. Just like this, connect it up. And now if I turn this one, use the angle, make it 180, or yeah, 180. Then I'll end up on both sides of the clip. That looks like that. Nice, nice. All right, let's just copy what we have here instead. And now we're gonna put it in our last clip. Just like that. All right. Now I don't want it on this side, so let me just get rid of this mask, put this in, and there you go. All right, and there's your animation. What I did at the end of this animation is also put an offset frame. If you don't know how to make an offset frame, I have a tutorial that I'll put up in the top right hand corner. If you want to learn how to make it, all right. And yeah, there you go. If you have any more questions or tutorials I should do in the future, please let me know down below. If you'd like to join a Discord server focused on Resolve AMVs, there's a Resolve AMV community server down below, which you also check out, as well as my own Discord server if you'd like to join. And with that, subscribe and have a good day. Box transitions that look that look that I look like. Box transitions that look like this. Hey, box transitions like this instead of that look like this. It's the same. Box transitions like this. Good. Oh, that was a good one. Holy. Good. I just can't say that looks like this. What the? <laughs> <f> <laughs>